Okay, let's officially start the class. Hi, Kiran. Okay, everybody say hi, Kiran. See, guys, hi, Kiran. She went off also. So, <laughs> welcome, welcome to uh, the praise and worship class. Uh, good morning, Ariela. Good to see you. Thanks. Um, hope you all are doing well. Um, got some good nights rest. Yes, no, slept well, slept late and woke up early, or slept early and uh, woke up also early. What? <laughs> right, okay, so uh, we've been uh, studying a little bit about uh, praise and worship. Um, we've what have we covered so far? It can be a little louder, Rin, and you're sitting in the front row, and I can't hear you. What? Seven types of uh, the Hebrew words for praise. Okay, yeah, and uh, what else? What are those seven words, uh, Hebrew words for praise? Yada. Okay, the the name and its meaning. So, first word, yada. Yada means hands of praise. Extended, you extend your hands and you praise. Uh, what's the second word? Toda. Yeah, and that means it's it's very similar. And yeah, I'm looking at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at you. <laughs> Extended hands with thanksgiving. Okay, so what is uh, like the slight difference between Yada and Toda? Yeah, so thanks with expectation. Uh, like even before you receive something, you, you are giving thanks. Okay, so that is uh, Toda. Okay, it's, it's, it's coming from the same root word. Um, and then the third word, okay, Krish, Krisha says Halal to boast, right? Um, third word is Halal, right? Yeah. What else? To boast, to to shine. Okay. Celebrate. To rave. All of that. Correct? No. It's all in there in your notes. No. I'm just sure. No. Sleep, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, hello. Thanks, Krisha. Um, what else? What? What? Again, okay, no, what? 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 No, I, you know why I'm asking that again and again, right? I need to hear the phlegm. <laughs> yeah, it means shout of praise, right? Uh, shout uh, wildly. Um, Shout aloud. That's what it is. Shabach. Um, where we saw a bunch of scriptures. Uh, and then what's the next word after Shabach? Tehila. Okay. Tehila is a song of praise, a new song, a spontaneous song. Right? Um, and then Barach. What is that? Posture of praise, you bow down, you to kneel. Uh, it's so the difference between okay, what's the one Hebrew word for worship? Shaha. Yeah, shaha. Yeah, you hear that? It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> um, so that is falling falling face down, uh, completely with your, your face to the ground. But the difference between shaha and uh, barak is. Barak is, like I mentioned, uh, was, is more of a military kind of a posture. So you're, like, you're bowing down, you're taking your body down, but your face is up beholding the king. right? So you are looking at the king. Your eyes are always on the king, but your body is uh, completely uh, low. So that's Barak. And the final, the seventh uh, Hebrew word for praise, everybody says Zamar. Zamar. Okay, uh, what is that? That's the music of praise. Yeah, thanks, Krisha. Posture of praise, music of praise. Yep, yep. Um, right. Um, so, did, were you? Did, 
did any of you get time to go back and uh, go through some of the scriptures that's mentioned there and some of those reflection questions? No, sir, we were too busy. We had too many assignments. Of course, we didn't make time for all of that. Uh, of course, OK. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would encourage you to do that when you can. Uh, it's just, I mean, that's there uh, to just to build you up personally, OK? So it's not there as an assignment. Uh, there is no grading and whatnot. But then if you just want to personally grow, just to go a little bit deeper um, on the topic of praise, just to study, uh, read the Word of God, um, it's going to help you. OK, um, so let's go to the next chapter, the foundation of praise. And we're just going to go a little bit deeper and deeper uh, into the topic. Um, and I hope that's OK. All right. Foundation of praise. Once again, it starts off by saying uh, praise in the dictionary means to commend, to applaud, to express approval or admiration of. Uh, to commend or to applaud. Okay, so we we've covered all that. We have a basic understanding, um, and then it goes on to say that we praise God one directly and two indirectly. Okay, so directly is by extolling Him or expressing out admiration to Him. That is direct. Okay, so in praise and worship or in when you're all alone uh, at home and whatnot, so you 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 are telling Him to Him is like. God, you are awesome. You are magnificent. I praise you for so and so, right? You are directly telling him that's praise. I mean, indirectly is when you testify about who he is and what he is um, in, in the congregation or to one another, right? It's like, hey, you know what God did to me this? He did for me this week. He came through, right? He provided uh, when I needed a financial breakthrough, he did. And so that's, again, like an indirect way of praising him, but you're still praising him. Are you guys with me? Yes, uh, yes. If you're with me, say yes. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. Right. Awesome. Um, so let's just uh, dive a little bit more deeper um, and just see the foundations of praise. Uh, what it really has to say. Okay. Uh, let's turn in our Bibles to Genesis chapter thirty-five. Let's go to Genesis chapter 35. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Genesis 29, apologies. Genesis chapter 29. Okay, so uh, the scripture in your notes, it gives only 29, 35, verse 35, but uh, I want to read from verse 30. Is that okay? Genesis 29, verse 30 um, onwards. So, just pull a little along. All right, here we go. Genesis chapter 29, verse 30 onwards. Then Jacob also went into Rachel, and he also loved Rachel more than Leah. And he served with Laban still another seven years. So he, interesting choice of words in line, if you want to underline, you can, is he also loved Rachel more than Leah. Okay? Um, it's building up, guys. It's building up. You know, when a guy likes another girl more than another girl, you know something is brewing, right? So, verse 31, here we go. <laughs> when the Lord saw, okay, when the Lord saw, he saw, when the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. So Leah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name, what? Reuben. For she said, the Lord has surely looked on my affliction. Okay. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. 
verse 33. Then she conceived again and bore a son and said, Because the Lord has heard that I am unloved, he has therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. Okay, so verse 33. She Then she conceived again and bore a son. Be here it says, Because the Lord has heard. So the first one is seen. Second one is heard my cry. Okay, um, therefore giving me this son also called she calls him Simeon verse 34 she conceived again and bore a son and now this time my husband will will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons therefore his name was called Levi okay so let's pause before we go to the next verse before we go to the next verse so what is happening here we all know the story of um, Jacob right it's 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 not just a Sunday school story. It's a beautiful story in its own way. Uh, we all know what happened to him, uh, how Laban, 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 whatever, <laughs> uh, tricked him. Uh, he originally wanted to marry uh, Rachel, but then um, uh, didn't work out that way. So he gets married to Leah. He didn't like Leah. Uh, he didn't want to get married to Leah, but then happened it, like stuff happened uh, and um, so it's very clear about what the Bible has to say is so eventually he gets married to Rachel um, but tell me this like any woman uh, would want to have a love of her husband yes or no sure or no yeah let me I, I know guys you are most of you all are singles okay so but <laughs> it's but we all understand what love is we understand relationships isn't it um it, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a basic thing it's it's a foundation of any relationship is like is to feel valued is to feel uh you know um important etc cetera, etc cetera, right so here it's very obvious it's very evident that jacob loves rachel more and it's here, the word says, Leah knew that she was unloved. Almost borderline being hated or ignored. Right? When um, has anybody here felt unloved? Okay, maybe not. All right. <laughs> uh, but, but the thing is, it's, it's not a pleasant, it's not a nice feeling. Okay, uh, if you're in, especially if you're in the house, there's no escape. It's like, okay, I know I'm being hated. I know everybody is ignoring me. And to make it, to make the matters worse, my own, own husband is ignoring me. He doesn't care because he likes another woman. Yeah? Are you all with me? It's quite intense. It's very easy for us to just read and say, yeah, yeah, Jacob just loved Rachel more and, and, uh, and not care anything about what's happening to the actual text the people in the character and and from like most often what i like to do is i like to put myself in their shoes and that's how you do a character study a character study is very important right so you put yourself in Leia's shoes you all also okay and uh, and you're being ignored you're being unloved and whatnot it's not a very uh you know um a nice place to be but then she says the first thing it says okay you know what can i do to make uh you know um, to get the attention of my husband. You see the tragedy in that story? <laughs> a wife has to do something to get the attention of her own husband. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just more tragic than you think it is. But then here she names, the, the text starts off by saying, the Lord saw. Okay, the Lord saw. And so she names the first son, Reuben, which simply means seen. Okay, now it means two things there. One, the Lord has seen me in my misery and also saying, she's saying, hey, Jacob, see, look, I have borne you a son. Will you not love me now? Look, Jacob, because Rachel didn't give, it says Rachel was barren, right? You guys with me? Mm. <laughs> okay. So that's the first thing. Second thing it goes on to say is nothing happened. Born, she bore him a son. 
uh, affection of Jacob didn't seem to change anything. Uh, so she bores him another son, and he names him Simeon. It simply means heard. This goes on to say, the Lord has heard my cry. And then she's also saying, it's like, Jacob, will you not hear my cry of love for you? Will you not love me now? I've borne you two sons. Will you not hear me out? Will you not hear how much I love you? Are you with me? Okay. And I want to take just a little bit of time uh, in this text because I want us to understand the, the magnitude of what is happening. In It's not just a name on the board or on a piece of paper. This was actual people, right? Real human beings. They're not mythical beings, okay, that just some existed some years ago and whatnot. Okay. Uh, so Jacob, still no attention, nothing. Reuben, yeah, OK, Simeon, OK. Nothing, not, nothing's happening. She bores him another son, the third son. Levi means attached. Now she's going before him once again and saying, hey, I've borne you three sons. Will you now get attached to me? Will you love me now? Still no sign of Jacob's love for Leah. That man is pretty strong and very focused in who he wants and who he wants to love. Um, and so, can you imagine uh, Leah's plight? Right? Uh, how many times in life uh, we don't have things go our way? We don't always get things that we want, right? Uh, it's like there's something that you want. You're so focused on that, and you forget everything else that's happening around you. Yeah? Uh, and that's what life is, isn't it? As in, you don't always get what you want. That's the reality of life. In an ideal world, maybe you'll get everything what you want, but it doesn't happen so. Uh, but that's the plight of Leah here. Okay. Is she is desperate to win her husband's love. She's desperate. She's not giving up. She's born three sons. Okay. Uh, it's yeah, it's not easy. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. But then something happens. So we read verse 34, she conceived again and bore a son and, and said, now this time my husband will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore his name was called Levi. Verse 35, and she conceived again and bore a son and said, now I will praise the Lord. Therefore she has called his name Judah. Then she stopped bearing. Huh. So we've arrived. Okay. After she's tried everything in her hands, like everything in her ability, uh, everything what she can do, and she's tried to win her husband's love, nothing has happened. So something or someone has taken her focus for far too long. And she's right. She has a very genuine reason to feel the way she felt, right? It's not to say, it's like, oh, what is this bad feeling? No. Like I said, she is his wife. <laughs> she had all the right to feel the way she, right? To win her husband's love. Uh, but then when she realized, okay, you know what? For far too long, my focus has been misplaced. My focus has been elsewhere I don't care anymore I'm going to pause now I'm going to praise him right um, so what is the significance of all of this is I mean to make again a long story short uh, 
Jacob and brings his family back and you know he he is about to get attacked by Esau and whatnot but along the way uh, in Genesis chapter 35 verse 19 uh, Genesis 35 verse 19 if you read it says so Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrathah that is Bethlehem Genesis 35 verse 19 right it says Rachel died so they were going from one place to another and so she died on the way and she was buried somewhere in Bethlehem okay um, now let's go to Genesis chapter 49 verse 31 Genesis 49 verse 31 Now, the scripture, uh, this text doesn't tell when uh, Leah died, but it says, this is what it says, right? There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. And there I buried Leah. So, somewhere along the way, after Leah named her son, her fourth son, Judah, and when her focus shifted, we don't really get to know much about the story after. Right? So the, the story just moves on. It's just progressing. And maybe somewhere along the way, the feelings towards Leah, Jacob's feelings towards Leah must have changed. Right? He must have become more affectionate along the way. The reason I'm saying that is it says here in Genesis 29 that Rachel was buried somewhere. Like, oh, no. <laughs> right? Uh, but Leah, like for someone to be buried along with their ancestral uh you know in in the cave or in the tomb it's a great deal in their culture you have to be there i mean jews took their family tree very seriously right so the thing is the whole point is why am i talking about death and buried and stuff like that is when leah's focus changed from just this natural thing to just fixing her eyes on God, God chooses to honor her in a way no man can. Right? Even when she's dead and buried and gone, it, the story tells something without saying, communicating verbally. Right? And so that's what this, this, this is the origin of praise, guys. This is such a beautiful story of, of uh, you know, how. Uh, Praise actually this gets started in this story. So, um, a side note here is I think a life lesson for us is, yeah, like I said, we we will not always get things that we want in life, but praise is not uh, a feeling, right? Praise is not a feeling. Okay, it's not it's not for you to say, okay, this morning I feel like praising God, and so I'm gonna praise Him, uh, but it's a choice that you make when all hell is breaking loose everything is coming crumbling down on you right and say okay now is when i'm going to choose to praise him right praise and worship is a choice that you make are you guys with me so far yeah all right um so when you read a psalm 114 um it's a lovely piece of scripture psalm 114 verse 2 let's see Uh, how are you guys doing online? Uh, all good. Okay. All right. Psalm one fourteen verse two says, "Judah became his sanctuary, and Israel his dominion." Right. Judah became his sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. Um, sanctuary is what um, sanct that it comes from this Latin word called sanctus, means a holy place. It's sanctus. Um, so sanctuary means a holy place, right? The house of God, which was used uh, interchangeably, uh, a dwelling place. So he, this verse says, Judah became his sanctuary, means the praise beca became his dwelling place, right? Um, so um, and that's what the Bible also says, right? Um, he uh, was Psalm chapter 22, verse 3. Let's go to Psalm 22, verse 3. Okay, all right. So, 
Psalm 22. Verse 3. But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Okay, can somebody else read another version of it, or whichever, Psalm 22, verse 3? Anyone, just feel free to go. Thank you. Uh, somebody else, please. Um. Verse 3. Thank you. Right. Um, so I, I particularly love this uh, scripture, this verse. Um, Different version says, yet you are enthroned on the praises of Israel. You are in the midst uh, of the praises of Israel, right? Uh, and then the previous psalm that we just read, Psalm 114, verse 2, it says, you have made Judah, or you have made praise, your sanctuary, okay? Uh, if you want to find God, his address is praise. Okay. Right? Because where is he dwelling? He has made Judah his sanctuary. That means he's resting there. Right? And Psalm 22 verse 3 says he's enthroned on the praises of his people. Another version says he inhabits the praises of his people. And there's another translation that says he consumes the praises of his people. Right? Consume. Is this so powerful? I think so. He's not just, con when he says he's enthroned on the praises of his people, or when he inhabits the praise, he's not just inhabiting the praise that you're saying, he comes and consumes all of us. Right? Uh, he, he inhabits the praiser as well, not just the praise, but the praiser too. Right? Are you with me? Yeah. Um, let's go on to... Uh, there are a bunch of scriptures that's mentioned there. Uh, in your notes, you will see uh, in page 13 in your PDFs, uh, or the notes, I hope it's page 13. It says, it is, a, it is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High. Okay, everybody say, it is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name. Once again, say, it is a good thing. Right? It's a. If it's a good thing, that means it's not a. It's not a. It's not a bad thing, right? So, it's a good thing to praise him. So, praise him, right? Uh, Psalm one forty seven verse one tells tells us that praise is beautiful and agreeable. Uh, praise for his mighty acts, Psalm 150, verse 2 says. Ephesians 1 and 2 is it. We should be to the praise of God's glorious grace. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 and 18. This is the will of God. Okay? Um, yeah. Everybody who's praying uh, for God's will to happen in life, uh, it's like, what's your will? 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 Uh, well, kind of. <laughs> this is the will of God that we might. Everybody say praise Him. Okay, that we might. Okay, it is our purpose in everything. Give thanks, right? Um, Philippians chapter four. It's not there in the notes. Philippians chapter four, verse four, says. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. 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 You know the song, right? And again, I say, Rejoice. Right? Um, Psalm 118, verse 24. I'm not sure. Uh, it says, 
this is the day that the Lord has made. I will, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Right. So, I think every day when we when we re realize that praise is a good thing, you will wake up and say, okay, instead of saying. Well, you have two choices. You can say, oh, man, this is such a boring day. This is... <laughs> or, <laughs> or you can choose to say, this is the day that the Lord has made, regardless of how your situation looks like. And I will choose to rejoice and be glad in Him. Right? Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, I think it says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So praise, you, when you praise Him, when you don't feel like praising, uh, is it, you don't praise Him in your own strength. Right? You realize that it is His joy that fills you, and you choose to praise Him, and then He begins to strengthen you to praise Him more. Okay, let's go. Um, he is full of glory. We praise Him because He is full of glory. He is great. Psalm 145, verse 3. Daniel chapter 2, verse 20 says, He is wise and wonderful. And powerful, sorry. Psalm 89, verse 1. He's merciful and faithful. Right? Uh, anytime you see the words that ending with full, when you say he's merciful, it simply means he is full of mercy. Right? When we say he's faithful, he's full of faith. Right? When we say that he is wonderful, Bible says he is the wonder of wonders. Uh, that's such, such a beautiful thing, right? He is the wonder of wonders. Uh, our eyes cannot get enough of Him. Um, he is the one who saves us, Psalm 18, verse 46. Keeps His promises to the kings, pardons sin, gives, our, gives us our daily food, and the list can go on, right? I've just mentioned a few things. Uh, there's another scripture. Uh, let's go to Isaiah chapter 60, verse 18, please. Isaiah. Chapter 60, 6 0, verse 18. Yeah, anybody? 18. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. Okay. Um, so, again, we need to understand just a little bit about uh, the ancient times. Is the gates was like a stronghold. It, it's like like the panchayat system. You have all these elders sit under a tree, you know, and uh, all these big mustache. Uh, it's like, this should happen today. That should not happen today. You are guilty and all of that. All of those things used to happen at the gates of a city. So uh, gates were a big deal, right? If you can break through the gates, like that means you've conquered, you're conquering the city. Okay, so it's saying here, you shall call your gates praise, and I'm Im immediately reminded of uh, shout, you know, uh, shout for joy, uh, Psalm 100 uh, verse 4. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Right, Psalm 118 verse 19. Let's look at that uh, quickly. Psalm. 118 verse 19. Thank you. Right, open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. Right. So uh, we read all of these. I mean, I, like I said, the list can go on. I've just mentioned a few uh, verses in, in the notes. Uh, like I said, in the earlier classes that we praise him for various reasons, right? We praise him because he's a provider, a protector, a guide, a shepherd, etc., etc. He's powerful, he's merciful, he's full of faith, he's faithful, he's wonderful, he's beautiful, he's awesome, uh, he's mighty. We praise him for his mighty acts, his deeds. Uh, we praise him because he's been good in our lives, uh, whatnot, right? 
uh, and then now we shift our eyes towards uh, the heavens and we see that I mentioned before that heaven has only one reason and that he is worthy amen um, I want us to go to the book of revelations now book of revelation chapter 4 Just a beautiful, beautiful chapter uh, in the Bible. Revelation chapter 4. Okay, I'm going to read it for us, um, probably the whole chapter. So, uh, yeah. It starts off by saying, John's vision of God's throne. Okay, it says, after these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. Pause. What color is jasper? It's almost like a regal blue kind of a thing. Okay. And sardius stone in appearance. There was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Okay. Take time. Just absorb these words. There was a rainbow, guys, around the throne. Like, how cool is that? <laughs> okay. Uh, in appearance, like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones, I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeding... Slow down, Roshan. Okay, verse 5. And from the throne, okay, proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass, like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures, full of eyes in front and in back. Let that sink in. Okay? It's not the skewed little angels with arrows, you know? The first living creature was like a lion. The second living creature like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man. And fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive glory and honor, power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Amen? Right, so, uh, one of the most beautiful gifts God has given us is the gift of uh, imagination. Everybody say imagination. Okay, the word imagination comes from the word imagine. And the word imagine comes from the word image. It's from the same word we get the word magic. 
also the same word we get the word magi three magis came from the east you with me right a lot of things in one word guys magi magic image imagine imagination okay i love to imagine things i love that song i can only imagine have you heard of it right i can only imagine what i would feel what it would look like to stand before him I can only imagine isn't it um why is why, why am i saying it's so powerful okay um how many of you have seen um uh, horror movies I'm not going to judge you but <laughs> yeah right so what happens is and sometimes uh, as in at least some of the people that i know who've seen horror movies uh, or or that that night that they've seen i don't want to go into the room alone in the dark <laughs> once more <laughs> why because <laughs> you're imagining something because you have the image of what you've seen in your head yes <laughs> like a white nun or something i don't know that's the thing apparently now so uh, right so you've seen this image of or i don't know ghost or a monster or a nun with an upside down cross so you have that image in your head and like and you are hesitant to go into a dark room because you're imagining isn't it so that's imagination is so powerful for us and the images sure we haven't seen the heavens open and whatnot we have not seen all of that i have not seen maybe you have okay <laughs> but there's this library of images god has left for us you know what that is right and he's painting this image right as you read okay there's this throne that was set in in my feeble mind i can only imagine so much but i'll take that it's better than having no imagination yes and this is throne and he looked like jasper and sardius and i think what imagine a throne and this is a throne made in heaven <laughs> have you seen some of the anybody here seen a palace or been into, into a palace yeah i was very very young when i went to mysore palace but i've forgotten most of it but uh and you've seen some of the the earthly thrones uh i mean it looks pretty neat right like, did a good job like yeah you know <laughs> uh but imagine a throne in heaven and this painting a picture here john in the revelations and um around the throne was a rainbow in appearance like an emerald <laughs> I don't know how it would look like, but it has to be the most coolest thing ever. Are you with me? Yeah. I mean, we say that he is wonderful. But the Bible says he's wonder of wonders. I don't doubt that. You can just begin to see, isn't it? Uh, sometimes we just read these verses too fast and we just move, uh, okay, you know, it's just amazing. But it's in God's throne room and all of this is happening and the 24 elders and and this come down to those angels crazy angels okay the one with the face of a, a lion a uh, face of a man face of an ox and with the face of an eagle okay without rest day and night they've been crying out for eternity holy 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 is the lord god almighty pause we sing songs holy 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 right different songs right yes or no Yes, no, okay. Let's imagine. One more time, can we? Imagine a lion, a heavenly lion, roaring holy. It's not gonna be cute. You know, Kerry Job singing, holy, holy, you know. Imagine a lion roaring holy. Yeah? Okay, let's um, let's go to Isaiah 6. Let's, let's get another picture of the throne room. 
Are you guys with me or are you sleepy? If you're sleepy and if you're here, it's okay. I still understand. Hey right, guys, I uh, hope you guys online are doing well. Um, if you have any thoughts or questions, please put it in the chat section. Uh, okay. Oh, we are four minutes to the break. Okay, I'll just quickly finish this section because I feel like it's... <clears throat> okay, Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Okay, uh, seraphim is a plural, and seraphim is singular, and they mean burning ones. That means these angels are on fire. Okay. <laughs> Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. With two, he flew. One cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who carried out, and the house was filled with smoke. Okay, you see the choice of words here. In verse, um, verse 1 itself, uh, in the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple, right? Um, there's another translation that says the train of his robe was filling. Okay, what's the difference? Filling was present continuous. That means filling, right? It's not filled in, you know. So why Isaiah is choosing these words is, you now Isaiah back in the day was known as the prophet of prophets. Okay, uh, most of the prophets were known to be living in a cave, uh, wearing a camel skin thing, and uh, you know, eating all these wild honey and stuff like that. They did not have great reputation, the prophets. But Isaiah was not like that. He was related to the king Uzziah. That means so he was also he also had access to the throne room of the king. Okay, so he was like one of the ministers. Right, so so he could see all these ministers, the royal thing and whatnot. And he's saying the train of his robe. Now, the train of his the robe. Every king wore a robe, right? Now, the length of the robe was determined by how successful the king was, how big his empire was, his kingdom was. Okay, um, and so here now we pause and we say that Isaiah is saying the train of his robe was filling. That means there was no end for the reign of his kingdom. Are you with me? Right? And so this, all of this is, is the throne, and that's what's happening here. And, um, and in that as a suspense, we'll pause. And we'll go for the break. And we'll resume the next session. Yeah, is that okay? Cool. Have a, have a good one. I guess I'll see you all in 10 minutes. Have a good break. <laughs>